welcome to another A-Level Computer Science video with me, Mr. Goff, for mrgoff.com. This video will focus on dictionary-based compression. Before we start looking at dictionary-based compression, let's do a quick recap of the stuff you should know about compression from GCSE. Once again, if you didn't do GCSE, you should go back and look at this compression stuff first before trying to learn about dictionary-based compression. So to start off with our recap, Compression is the process of making a file smaller in size. Lossy compression does this by permanently removing some of the data. Obviously, with a text file, this would be a problem because when it's uncompressed or decompressed, then you can't get the exact same data back again. Lossless compression achieves compression without losing any data. We learned at GCSE about run length encoding and it's one method of lossless compression, but it's not suitable for text because it needs runs of the same character to happen one after each other. One possible solution for compressing text that is lossless is to use dictionary-based compression, which we're going to take a look at in more detail now. With dictionary-based compression, a dictionary, which is a table of values, is created from which the text can be recreated. If we consider the common phrase, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, we can see that a dictionary of just seven words could accurately recreate this phrase. The underscores in this example table represent spaces. As we've got less than eight overall terms, we only need three bits to represent each in binary. And so the phrase an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth can be compressed as 000, 001, 010, 011, 001, 100, 101, 101, 110, 010, 101, 110. Now you wouldn't need to put spaces in there. I just did that so you could see easily which section from the table we were actually using. Counting up the bits in our compressed representation of an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, we find that it's got 33 bits or 4.125 bytes. In 8-bit ASCII, the phrase has 38 characters and so would take up 38 bytes. This is a saving of around 89.15%. However, this is not the full saving you get with dictionary-based compression. The saving would actually be lower because the dictionary itself also has to be transmitted alongside the message. This example shows only a very short phrase being converted to dictionary-based compression. You may be thinking, that the size of the dictionary renders it a little bit useless. However, as the size of the text being transmitted grows in size, the difference between the size of the actual text and the size of the dictionary needed grows a lot, meaning that this is a very effective method for compressing large amounts of text. That brings us to the end of this video on dictionary-based compression and these videos on the A-Level Data Representation Series. Join me again soon when I'll be back with new videos for another section of the A-Level specification. Try the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise computer science, and until next time, it's bye for now.